Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And it's Tech Tuesday, so today we'll be talking about technology, the prominence of technology among Nigerian businesses today. Now we have our guest here, Kende Ogundari. He's the country manager for Zoho Technologies. Good morning, Kende. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yes. All right, so technology has taken over the world. And um, I mean, even in 2023, we've seen the rise of AI more than ever before. Yes. You can do a lot of things you know, just with your mobile phone. You can just put a prompt and um, you get everything that you need. You can just say, please create a picture that does this and that and that and boom, there's a full picture being out. So now we're talking about, you know, using technology for your business. I just want you to give us an overview of how important and how beneficial it is for us to start to use, incorporate technology into our businesses and our everyday lives as well. Because our quote of the day was from Bill Gates and it talks about technology, you know, coming into our lives and you don't even really recognize it. Yes. You don't know that it's there. Yes. But then um, as you have it in your everyday life, it's just subtle. And it just comes in. So how do we start to use um, technology for our businesses and our everyday lives? And, you know, it's good for us. Great. Thank you very much for that. Um, I also believe that every human being today, we are using technology in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Even as a business owner, small, medium enterprise, you are using a technology. For example, people are using social media to sell their stores. Yeah. Social media is a technology platform. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go further down, that is when you now go to optimizing your business processes. Then you now think of maybe incorporating a CRM tool, you try to optimize your marketing activities, you try to do your data analysis, and you're checking, getting huge data to interpret them, then make informed decisions from them. You know, but from the from the basic, right? Mm -hmm. Technology is our day to day. It has already come to stay. You know, <laughs> WhatsApp, story messages and everything, mm -hmm. people are selling mm -hmm. using social media, using technology on a daily basis. But then for you to scale your business, you must find a way to utilize this tool properly. Okay. and get a proper training or orientation on how to expand your business, derive data from this uh, analysis, and mm -hmm. then you can then scale your businesses. Mm. We know that technology is important, and what we should be talking about is the type of technology that we need for businesses yeah. uh, to, to thrive. Um, a, a, a funny thing is that when we were doing cashless economy, as it was, mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of people that you go to and you ask them if they have a POS uh, machine and they tell you that their business has not grown to the uh, point that they mm -hmm. need a POS. And I keep wondering, <laughs> how big will your business be before you get a POS machine and people can't pay you, some of them lost customers and all that. Mm -hmm. And you know, I don't know if we have enough information out there that will make, give the people a different psyche when it comes to embracing technology. Do you think it's something that we can just, at a snap of the finger, get people to incorporate in their businesses? I think it's possible because I work in that space and also because this is possible but has it been done enough? Is yes, I think what we just need to do is create more awareness for people. Mm. So for example, my organization will focus a little bit more on MSMEs to empower them, you know, which is why we encourage them to use an invoicing software. You know, when you do an invoicing software, at the end of the day, you will be able to see how much debit you have, how much credit you have, who is owing you when is this overdue and with that you can actually get an holistic view of that now if you have an investing software which is an accounting software you can easily access some grants from the government you can go to the bank to scale up your business because you have data sets to show them okay yeah this is how much i made last year now i will need you to give me maybe a certain amount of money to expand my business now moving forward to marketing activities right how do you gauge your engagement how do you measure it so you're posting on social media, you are getting 50 comments, 120 likes. How do you know your reach? How do you know your engagement? You know, you need a software that will interpret all these things for you, then you can make sense. You will know your demographics. Okay, maybe um, people between the age of 21 and 30 is my appeal client, mm -hmm. you know? So you create content that will appeal to them. Yeah. If you have that data, or maybe it's really between 70 and 80, you will know, okay, maybe um, the retirees, you'll be able to mm. make sense of that and then create content that will speak to that demographic. So technology is very important. So it is, it's already available. We just need to create more awareness for them to see it and use it. Well, the thing is, some people feel that when you're talking technology, you have to be a very learned person. That is a, a notion that I don't know how we can, we can debunk or we can correct. 
Mm. You have to you have to be a nerd. Because mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. you when you when you see people who are into technology, people who are tech bros and yeah. texts like we said, like, oh yeah. this person is a nerd, this person is thinking <laughs> numbers, <laughs> coding, you know, all of that, like things my brain cannot assimilate. So mm. So is it something that the, the local um uh, yes, woman in the market can can, can also yes use. i i was told that if you can use a whatsapp message right if you can use whatsapp you can post on facebook yeah and even like and comment on facebook you will be able to use any invoicing software any marketing software to scale your business mm -hmm. just that there is this story around technology being big like you need mm -hmm. a huge computer you need to mm -hmm. see that no i mean nowadays we have SaaS companies like uh, my company is all is a cloud-based software so you can download all the applications you need to run your business on your mobile phone so when you have a crm tool on your mobile phone you just need to check what is your sales crm crm you're talking what jargon you're talking <laughs> <with> <laughs> you have to be careful crm? Crm? So, crm is customer relationship management software better okay. now when you use a customer relationship management software it helps you analyze and also nurture your lead through the sales pipeline Okay. So if you get multiple leads from multiple sources, Instagram, Facebook, mm. or you even go to um, uh, web forms online, yeah. you know, yeah. people come to Just your page, tell you to where, you where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. right? I like that. And then automatically, the CRM has capability to even go a little bit further by automating your processes. Ooh. So instead of you calling them or trying to send email, mm -hmm. web messages, web messages mm -hmm. you can instruct the AI on the CRM tool to do a welcome email. That's because, amazing. Yeah, you can do that. And, you know, for example, a lot of us, we fill a lot of form online, mm -hmm. and maybe two weeks later, somebody's not calling me. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine when you submit a form on the website or you try to reach out to a vendor on social media and your CRM tool is sending the message, hello, Kenny, how are you? Thank mm -hmm. you for showing interest. Automatically, that would sing. Trigger, yes. trigger something in you. You can't engage in the business. Mm -hmm. You know, then maybe two days later, hey, Kenny, you have not made any purchase yet. Yeah. Can we help you? This is this so all of that is automated. Yes. That's amazing. I and we that. get, on our birthdays, we get this message from our bank, from yes. our companies. Mm -hmm. Even emails. activities, actions. So oh. your birthday is so I'll, I'll stop clapping for my bank. Like <laughs> 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 I, get, I, get, I get emails. I remember my, my birthday. Yeah. Okay, so we have, we have begun enumerating uh, these um, tools that we need. Let's just continue and say, okay, uh, when you call one, you say what the benefits of this and how you can use them okay. because we need to know them and identify them. Okay, great. So, um, the first one is sales. I believe that for every, every company, there are three major departments, sales, marketing, and finance. Mm. So for your sales department, you need a CRM tool, mm. whether big or small. So for example, we have Zoho CRM, we have Zoho Begin, we have Zoho Table. Now, for different categories of clients, we can recommend CRM if you need a huge automation done, right? Or we, into our, or we can recommend Zoho Begin, which is a small for small businesses, mm. like moms and pops, that they just want to know the name of their customer, the address and phone number. Okay. You know, then table is people that are not really using anything at the moment. We are trying to encourage them to move from spreadsheets to a software that they can easily automate. You know, so to manage your sales process, you will need a customer relationship management tool. You'll be able to nurture your lead through the sales pipeline. You will know what is the status of this on the pipeline. You will know how many people are currently under negotiation, you know, mm. you are bidding, you are trying to go back and forth, all the emails, communication, everything is stored on the CRM. Mm. Now, if you go to marketing, marketing is very important because that is, these are people that shout. Mm. They tell your brand about, you, tell people about, yeah, your, about brand, your brand, you know. So you need email marketing and I believe that email marketing is very, very important because you need to keep constant touch with your people, mm. you know, you need to be in touch with them, you need to send them emails, you need to tell them the new updates, products, you know, that are coming, yes. Then, you, know, you know, so email marketing is there, then we have social media marketing. Mm. Social media marketing is very, very important. Now, you want to be able to know what is going on. And um, tell your brand story uh, as yes. well. Yes. And um, so I'm going to even ask about success stories. So, yes. so far, have you seen like um, success stories with Sweet. companies, you know, using AI right now? Do you have success stories that you can actually share with us? Um, yes, a lot of companies are using AI. Like, for example, I, for our Zoho CRM tool, AI is heavily incorporated. Mm. So, and when I say heavily incorporated, if you're going to come to us and try to tell us about your business, we'll tell you how you can actually use AI to make it easier for you. Now, imagine a situation where a customer come into your company and AI yeah, will send the automatic email and everything. But then you have 200 customers already 
coming in on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. How do you know which one to focus on? Who is actually interested in your products? Mm -hmm. You know, that means you have to go through one by one, calling them, sending them email. Yeah. AI can actually tell you by their engagement with you, level of engagement, their sector, what you are selling, what they're interested in, their comments, sentiment analysis. So it will give you the top 20, mm -hmm. top 5, and top 2. So your salespeople will not be chasing you just the cloud. You know, mm -hmm. they will focus on the main deal. And the other people that are not interested, you can then maybe do that and send a general email to get them to that level mm -hmm. whereby you can do it. So AI is very important. Analytics as well too. So data analysis, which we have a Power BI, you know, when you have a lot of data sets, how do you make sense of it? You know, mm -hmm. you are getting leads from Abuja, Lagos, Port Harcourt. You are trying to make sense, okay, which market is more important to me? You know, you can actually tell AI to tell you, analyze it, okay, Demo, uh, based on demograph, um, gender, age, and everything, then you would be able to make that decision. So AI is everywhere. You yeah, know? but so, so, so like people always say, or some people say that with AI, there's no sense, like there's no emotional connection. For instance, now um, I want to be able to connect with my clients, with my customers, yeah. but there's no proper connection because. It's just the, it's a computer that's, you know, doing everything for me. A computer generates the people, says, okay, these are the people that come. Computer generates the email that's going. So mm -hmm. how do you come, you, how do you... Um, Personalize, yes, humanize the AI. Humanize mm -hmm. the AI in the Absolutely. sense that with my clients, we still have that connection. And even, are there other challenges with AI as well that you'd like to share? Mm, fantastic. So the part of humanizing the AI is where you would need to look for the rights company that provides you the software. Mm. Now, speaking about business too, how do you feel when I say, hi, um, um, are you interested in Zoho CRM, make payments and do this? That is very robotic. But can you imagine when you instruct the AI to say, hello Kenny, how's everything going? You know, last year you purchased 2,000 naira worth of this, it's about the same time this year, would you like to go for the same thing or these are other recommendations? So you can actually even train the AI to understand your customer's uh, behavior. So it's not just, it's not just hello, and buy, buy, will come, buy. Yeah, and will study your customer behavior and then give recommendation. So that is you personalizing your product. And when somebody addressed me as Ken did directly, I'm like, okay, you know me. You know, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. people send you emails, the familiarity. The familiarity, you know, have a wonderful day. All those things, you can actually train your AI to do that. And when people say AI is speaking over our job, mm -hmm. yeah, no. So I'm gonna ask you, are there myths to debunk about AI? Yeah, that's the part of taking over your job. AI is here to enhance and make you work more efficiently. Right. You understand? So for me for me to set up an AI, somebody must impute certain things instruction. Mm. Send email to Kenny by Does that email. does that need uh, expertise? <coughs> technological expertise to do that because a regular person may not know when you're talking about instructing AI, I mean, what level of uh, know-how do I have to instruct the well, AI? I'm sure, I'm sure it's not coding. It's not the it's coding not part. Really it's just maybe sending a message. And it's just like a chatbot. When you open a chatbot, like your maybe social media chatbot, mm -hmm. they'll say, um, can I see the result for the last two transactions? Send it. AI will go find it bring it back to you in this under the same chat box that's amazing you can just read it instead of it i can remember like um other times you have to maybe go to a shelf and start scanning through the files <laughs> you bring out the stuff is mr king this name here yeah. no it's not here but now with ai you yes. know it's everything is autom it's automized it's automized for, report for the last two years you know it will go around and give you all the reports about kenny under the chat box so you don't need to start coding i don't like coding it's very stressful mm. you know and even at this point there are a lot of platforms that you can even use can you imagine with our software you will be able to build a website within three to four hours a wow. working website and you will publish it and it will add everything you need and you can do it by yourself mm. drag drop drag drop and everything is set up just publish and it's there Okay, so but how can this start to impact? Because we're talking about businesses now, we're yeah. going to move over to Nigeria in a little bit. Yeah. Um, how can this start to impact your business? I'm talking about resources. How do you use this this a this AI yeah. that we're talking about yeah. that we're selling out? And we're saying because most times they're saying, "Oh, buy this um, product, yeah. this AI, whatever would help you." But how am I sure that I would make good sales? How am I sure that it would um, it would lead to good resources profitability is what i'm talking about now okay i'm going to itemize like two things so for example you have 100 customers right it is impossible for you to keep track of all the 100 and keep a personal relationship with them mm -hmm. at some point you will maybe leave about 20 or 30 of them 
but with technology and AI, you can keep in touch with all of them at the same time, at the same space, without you getting involved at all. So with doing that, you will be able to enhance your business. Now, aside that... Yeah, go on. Yeah. So you can also enhance your business productivity. Well, like I say, for example, now you are trying to do a marketing research or survey, you know, and you are trying to launch a new product. You mm -hmm. want to see how the market will receive it. What do you do? Pull up the customer data from 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 2 years ago. You see the pattern, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Nigerians tend to be moving towards technology right now. They are yeah. trying to optimize the way they do their business. So with that information, you will know who should you go to first. You know, how do you make your money back? Then how do you make your money back? Can you imagine you sitting here and your system is working, telling 1,000 persons about you? Mm. And they are coming... Even when you're asleep. That's, 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 you. that's, the, that's the goal. <laughs> I want to be able... I always tell people, I want to be able to make money while I'm sleeping. Yes, because yeah. that's, that's how you just make your money. Yes, and also, you know, you can engage all of them, prospect them, nurture them, without you engaging them physically or personally. Mm. Computer can do that for you right now. Now imagine you doing that as one person, but imagine a software doing it. You can reach out to multiple persons and you can increase your revenue by doing so. Mm. Although you are going to spend money on technology, but I think it's worth it's the, worth it. The, yes. Are there potential risk? Oh yes. There are a couple of potential risks. Number one is data privacy and security because I don't want to expose my data to anybody. Mm. You know, recently last year we uh, Nigerian um enacted the law yes NDPA you know and so that is a potential risk which is why when you're looking for a vendor to use for technology you have to consider all these things the second one will probably be the cost mm. you know now technology is very costly you it's quite expensive it's quite expensive that is why we on the side we try to look at the market and present our products in local currency most of these big big names that you have on the market you pay in usd you pay in um, foreign currency by the time you convert that with the current exchange rate mm. you've already exhausted your budgets by first quarter or second quarter of the year you know so when you're looking at that look at the cost optimization and don't look just for the big names look for who will give you the best or maximum benefit from using the software so it's, there's no point in using a big brand when the return on investment is just little yeah with there you can look for the local one indigenous company that will give you the exact same thing you you need for your business to grow okay i'm just wondering why um we see so much potential in using technology to do our private businesses and the government doesn't seem to be doing anything about it i, I don't know um let's just people are watching the people who uh, take decisions for us are watching as well let us just know how beneficial it will be not to individuals now because we've seen that a lot mm -hmm. uh, to the government um, I think our government needs to start incorporating technology in the way they even interact with the common man on the streets mm. for example um, if you want to do a registration in the government office, have you been there? It's <laughs> tedious. Oh, it's damn. quite tedious. Oh. Even NIN, before you've been there and it's they tell tedious. you our computer is slow. No internet. And I'm like, I do need to be here. And because I work in that space, anytime it's a headache for me to get this thing done. Send me a form online. I can do it on my phone. Send mm -hmm. it back to you. Review it. And even doing the reviewing, you can easily set parameters. Okay, if this box is empty, reject. If that one is not filled, reject. Mm -hmm. If value should be here, it should be more, no, more than 10 digits. Mm -hmm. If it's more than 10 digits, reject. If it's less than 10, reject it. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of parameters that you can set. One of that will make life of a normal citizen a lot, lot easier. Even when it comes to governance as well, so I think it's high time for them to start using technology. Mm. Because businesses are growing with technology. Why can't the government go the well. country grow and develop into that area? Which is why I think the new government is trying something about technology. Yeah. But I think we need to do more. We need to do more. We need to find a way to incorporate technology in our day to day, especially in governance of this country, is very, very important if you are trying to, to scale. In your experience uh, with the government and all that, uh, do you think the, um, there is that political will to make the atmosphere conducive for technology to thrive? Not just using technology, but for technology startups like policies that are very, very good for technology to thrive. Um, so in the or, or you years, think there's something that should be done more in policy wise to make sure I think in the recent years I mean I would say the government they always like the last to come you know mm. when they follow the trend they can see that technology is taking over the world so they are forced to follow it mm. you know so now that's why they are trying to make policies 
to make it easier for people all these um startup policies and startup acts that they are trying to introduce mm. to make it easier for people but i think the ease of doing business in Nigeria is very important too because if you are trying to do something in this country it's very i mean it's it's not easy <laughs> you know going through that level of approval this and yeah. that it can take years sometimes you know something that you can easily do but when they incorporate technology even in how they do it it makes it easier for people people can actually sit back not thinking of the stress they have to go through to get approval. Yeah. Then, then they can think of my business, how I can scale my business. Yeah. I mean, I know this is talking about scaling your business, and I wish we had more time, mm -hmm. you know, to deep dive into this, but sadly, we have to go. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so we've been thinking about the prominence of technology among Nigerian businesses today, and our guest has been Kendi Ogundari. He's the country manager for Zoho Technologies. Thank you so much for coming in, and I'm sure we'll bring you back because mm -hmm. we, we need more time. This time was too short. We do need more time. But thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. All right. All right. Cool. That's the size of our show. This is where we wrap it up this morning. But we'll be back again tomorrow um, for the breakfast. My name is Rume Paulson. And my name is Nyamgo Agaji. Have a very wonderful day. Goodbye. <laughs>